Hey everyone, here are some tips to help you uh, survive growth group in isolation and some that might help you uh, survive growth group when you're meeting in person as well. Tip number one, join a growth group. We're not meant to live disconnected lives, so make sure you have other Christians to walk alongside you as you work out your faith together. And a growth group is a great place to do that. Tip number two, rethink screen time. If you find you are over all the screen time, instead of not showing up, you can come for a shorter amount of time. It's encouraging for everyone to see your face. You know, also, if, if you have a, a night that's broken up into a schedule, you can come for the study or the social time or the prayer time. A little bit is better than nothing. Number three, communicate with the leader and the growth group. You are an important part of your growth group and they want to know what's going on with you. So if you're not coming or you're only coming for a short time, tell the group. Or perhaps you, you know, you're struggling to be fully present. So tell the group that you'll be there but not, might not be able to contribute much. These shouldn't be happening regularly, but people are happy to make allowances when they know you need them. And again, this is where a group chat is really helpful. You can share your struggles, your prayer, you can banter, you can send funny memes. It's a great way to communicate. Now, it's not all about logistics. Perhaps you'd like to do a particular study, like a, a more or less structured night, or would like to have a finishing time. Tell the leader. They won't know unless you communicate it. Number four. Christian community is not limited to once or twice a week. You are allowed, nay encouraged, to talk to other members of your growth group throughout the week. You should also be talking to other Christians throughout the week. See, a growth group or a church service is not designed to fulfill your social needs. They create spaces for, for social connections, which you can develop at other times. But if you want to get to know someone better, Talk to them outside of a growth group or a church service. Please be aware of boundaries. You know, this isn't a place for you to, this isn't a space for you to pick up somebody or force yourself on someone. And this is where a group chat can be really helpful. You're not going to be besties with everyone in your church or your growth group, but your friendships will always be limited if you rely on a church service or a growth group setting to build those relationships. At some point, you'll have to send a message or make a phone call in order to get to know someone better. Number five, people in your group should occasionally get under your skin. It's inevitable. We're family. We will annoy each other. Your group should be filled with people who think differently to you. So occasionally someone will say something that rubs you the wrong way. If it happens all the time, then yes, that needs to be addressed. But if it never happens, then where are the people who will help sharpen you and help grow your capacity to love others how Christ loves us? We need other people in our lives to sharpen us and grow us in our faith. And growth groups should be a place that allow people to work out their faith honestly and safely. And that means it should occasionally get uncomfortable. And finally, pray for your growth group. Not just when you're meeting as a growth group, but throughout the week, you should be praying for these people that you are traveling this Christian faith with. And I strongly believe that if you want to love someone better, you should pray for them. 